have Vistanicol, given for non-obstructive urinary retention, specifically for neurogenic bladder, where clients with neuro issues get loss of strength in their urinary muscles. So think Vistanicol for bladder control. It helps to treat urinary retention. Now, Kaplan mentioned Vistanicol is used to treat functional urine retention, known as neurogenic bladder. Now, the HESI says Vistanicol is used for urinary atony, and TCAs plus Vistanicol are used to prevent bladder dysfunction, and the expected outcome is a non-distended bladder. Now, how it works. It works by stimulating cholinergic receptors. So think cholinergic, we get secretions. So our clients get wet and wild down there and all over the body. So the common side effect is lots of sweating, urinary urgency, and low heart rate and low blood pressure. Now a little NCLEX tip. Don't get caught up by the mode of action. Since most exit exams and question banks, they focus on the reasons why this drug is given and not for the common side effects. So again, think Bethanicol is for bladder control. Now our second drug in urinary is finasteride, given to shrink the prostate, typically given to clients who suffer from an enlarged prostate like BPH, that benign prostate hypertrophy. So the HESI says, what medication will shrink the prostate? And the answer was finasteride. So the memory trick is a little bit fun here. So think about a guy riding around on a horse with a swollen prostate. Very painful, right? So if you want a fun ride, then we give finasteride. Now, the third drug in urinary is terazosin and tamsluzosin, given to treat urinary retention in clients with enlarged prostates that hold back the urine. So BPH is benign prostate hypertrophy, which I call BPH big prostate that holds back urine, making it difficult to pee. Now it works by relaxing smooth muscle in the bladder, the prostate, and the periphery, which helps the body to release urine from the body to the potty. So the big memory trick here is teragosin helps the patient go pee, and teraslosin we teach slow position changes for that orthostatic hypotension. Clients can get dizzy upon standing since the drug relaxes smooth muscles in the periphery. And lastly, Terra Low Sin, so we avoid low blood pressure drugs like Sildenafil, aka Viagra, since both can dilate the blood vessels and lower the blood pressure together. Now the big side effect to focus on is the orthostatic hypotension here, that low blood pressure. This is due to the relaxation of the smooth muscle. So especially when the drug is started, or when a dose is increased. So, slow position changes for Terra slow sin. Now the HESI mentioned this as a common side effect for headache and orthostatic hypotension when it's concerned about safety. Now the key point is patient teaching is slow position changes and we avoid Zidenafil, that erectile dysfunction med, AKA Viagra. So again, think Terra low sin. We avoid blood pressure lowering drugs since both will lower the BP too much. And lastly, a big NCLEX tip here, don't get tricked. Grapefruit juice is actually okay with this drug. Probably one of the only medications on the NCLEX that's actually okay with grapefruit. So it's the most commonly chosen distractor. Typically 60% of students got this wrong on most quiz banks. Now our last urinary drug is oxybutanine and tolteridine given to treat an overactive bladder. So it decreases urinary frequency, urgency, and nighttime bathroom visits called nocturia. Now don't get tricked with sound-alike drug names. Oxybutanine is not oxycodone or oxytocin. So to help you remember, oxybutanine ends in B with butanine. So just think B for bladder. Just think of a big ox on your bladder given for urinary frequency. And oxycodone is an opioid pain medication. Since codone sounds like codeine, it's an opioid pain med. Just look for the O's in codone to remind you that it's an opioid. And lastly, oxytocin is for labor. So think oxytocin is to control.
contract, given to contract or induced labor. And that's how you know the memory tricks and not to get tricked on the NCLEX. Now for the mechanism of action, oxybutyn works by drying up the body. It's technically an anticholinergic, which means it's an anti-secretion. So just think anticholinergics, we get anti-secretions. So we get super dry. Now the common side effects of all anticholinergics is we can't see, can't pee, can't spit, and can't shh, poop. So can't see, we avoid giving anticholinergics to clients with glycoma. Now the ATI mentioned this, that this medication can cause blurred vision, dry eyes, and we avoid glycoma patients. And you can't pee, we avoid giving to BPH, since that big prostate holds back the urine already, giving anticholinergic would make the BPH worse. And you can't spit with this drug, so the ATI mentioned that we get a dry mouth. So we teach patients to use artificial saliva products and sugarless candy to keep that mouth moist. And lastly, you can't poop, so constipation is common. So we just teach increased fluid and fibers, and we give stool softeners and laxatives. And we avoid giving to patients with a bowel obstruction, since anticholinergics will dry out the bowel further, making those obstructions even worse. Now the big key point here is the major adverse effect and the patient teaching. So as far as the major adverse effect, urinary retention is the biggest one here. Since the drug can work too well in dry into the body, and stop urination altogether. So the key term is no urination all day. We must report this to the HCP. Big NCLEX tip right there. And as far as patient teaching, we teach slow position changes to prevent that orthostatic hypotension, and we avoid hyperthermia, too much sun exposure. Again, this drug causes a dry body, leading to major dehydration, resulting in low blood pressure and heat intolerance. So. For teaching, slow position changes, and increase the fluid. Now for the top two missed questions for the urinary section. Question number one. The nurse is conducting teaching with an elderly patient, newly prescribed terazosin. Which instructions should be included in the teaching plan? Select all that apply. So this question is asking about terazosin, which instructions to include. Now before you look at any of the options, Always think of the first few things you know about the drug or the disease. So the memory trick for terazosin, we use teragosin. It helps the client go pee. And teraslosin, we have slow position changes with that orthostatic hypotension. And then teralosin, we avoid giving any blood pressure medications that can lower the blood pressure further. And yes, it's okay to have grapefruit with this med. Now option number one, it is not necessary to avoid foods that contain grapefruit. Yes, so it's okay to eat grapefruit on this medication. One of the only ones that we can give on the end clicks here. Now option two, make sure to change position slowly while on this medication. So yes, this is also correct. Terra Slosin, we have slow position changes to prevent that orthostatic hypotension. Now option three, I will not take this medication with anti-acids. Yes, of course. The double A's here. Avoid anti-acids for all medications here. Now, option number four is also correct. Do not take zildenafil while on this medication. So yes, don't take zildenafil, which can kill, since both drugs can lower the blood pressure too low. Now, lastly, option five. If you forget to take a dose of this medication, Take two pills as soon as you remember. No, this is always an NCLEX trick here. We never double up on meds if a dose is missed. Now, question number two. Which are expected side effects of oxybutynin? Select all that apply. So this question is asking about oxybutynin expected side effects. So again, before looking at the options, just think of what you remember about the drug. So remember the B in oxybutyn is for oxybladder, or an overactive bladder. And it dries the body, so we have low blood pressure, and you can't see, pee, spit, or shh, poop, so you get constipation. So option number one, hypertension. No, we get low blood pressure when the body is dry. 
Now option two and three are both correct here. Dry eyes and dry mouth, since you can't see and you can't spit. And option four is incorrect. No, you can't sh poop. We would get constipation when the body's dry. And lastly, hypokalemia. This one was a little bit tricky here, but it's incorrect. So just think, the medication dries the body. So we typically get labs that are high when the body is dry. So we call them high and dry lab values, AKA hemoconcentration, which is an indication of dehydration. I sing about this on our music video on YouTube, so just search Metabolic Panel Music Video. Concentration, an indication of dehydration.